Prince absolutely welded to the build plate. Benchies that uh, are feeling a little shifty. Z axes that just won't freaking move. And an E3D V6 that has actually melted. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 50. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel YouTube's longest weekly print fail fix video series. Thank you all for coming and we are always looking for fails. So if you have fails that you want me to take a look at on the channel, by the way, episode 52 is going to be a meme episode. So please send me your fails so we can have a fun one with that. You can always tag us on the social medias, email us YouTube at 3dmusketeers.com and always use the hashtag print fix so I can take a look at it. And oh yeah. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. First up, we've got someone who's running Windows 7. And I think that might be their problem as they're trying to update Cura. Then we take a look at a resin print that is welded to the plate and they cannot get it off. And the solution is actually pretty easy. I think you guys will like that one. From there, we got a Benchy that looks like it might have had a bit of a disaster on a speedboat race, but it might be something a little more complicated. After that, we have an Ender that cannot go home even when you force it by hand. Hmm. From there, we've got a Prusa that is having an issue with a few layers in the middle of the print that don't look right. That one I would love your guys' opinion on. After that, we got a fail from Maker Deck with some threads that, well, don't look like threads. And after that, we have a fail from the 3D Printing DM, my friend Danny's Discord. 3D printing tabletop where we've got a leaky hot end, but it's because they had a melty hot end. Stay tuned for that one. I think you guys will enjoy it. But I know what you don't enjoy because a lot of you skip it. My segue, our sponsor, 3D Musketeers. <laughs> Look, if you're going to be honest, be honest, right? Look, we self sponsor these videos because, well, hey, we're not big enough to get crazy cool channel sponsors, but you know, if you do want to kick a couple of bucks into that creator fund, we greatly appreciate it. We have tiers starting as low as $1 on our Patreon page. So go take a look over there and give us a couple of bucks if you can afford it. If you can't, hey, like and subscribe goes a long way and share it with a couple of people. It helps us out. But if you are looking to offload your 3D printing, 3D scanning, laser cutting, CNC, if you're a lot looking to offload making stuff, hit us up at 3D Musketeers. I'm not going to keep this thing long. Let's get back into the friggin' fails. Let's go. One of our patrons uses Facebook quite a bit. His name is Aaron, and he found this one on the 3D Printing for Noobs Facebook group. And it says, trying to install Cura. Anyone ever seen this? running Windows 7 64-bit. Let's unpack this a little bit. First off, stop using Windows 7. It is outdated, it has security vulnerabilities. Start with that because that's gonna be a big issue. Number two, just update Windows. And as it's saying, try reinstalling the program to fix this problem. You might need to do a clean install of Cura, but my best guess is that because you're running Windows 7, it's just some sort of compatibility problem. I would do the upgrade. It's kind of tough, right? There's an expense involved in that sometimes because it depends on if you choose to sell the seven C's or not. But yeah, Windows 7 is outdated and that would be my best guess here. Uh, but if you are missing some sort of DLL path and it is a problem, start by following the directions by uninstalling it and reinstalling it and doing a clean install not just trying to update cura completely wipe cura off your computer then go ahead and reinstall it with the latest update and that's going to be the arachne update uh, either i think it's on 5.1 already hopefully that works if not please upgrade windows any idea how to get this off it is stuck on good one Wear some damn gloves, please. Please wear gloves. Two, wear gloves because resin is toxic. And then three, put it in a Ziploc baggie, toss it in your freezer. The metal will shrink a little bit and that should cause the part to pop right off. So you should be good to go. You can basically chill your build plates to do something like this, but in a case like this, I might recommend going to a flex plate. Now, one of our resident 3D resin experts, Mr. Chris Cantlin, who sent us this fail, is against what I'm about to say. 
I say go flex plate, Chris says no. The reason he says no is actually a reason that we've seen on the channel a few times, where if you don't leave it for three days to let the glue dry, or you end up doing something where the part shifts, that build plate can start shifting in the X and Y direction as the actual piece of steel moves around on the magnet itself. I don't have a good way to solve this problem because there's really no way to like keep it from moving. But I think in cases like this where you're going to print directly on the build plate, a flex plate is a better move. But I do understand Chris's reasoning for not liking it, especially because he has a Jupiter. He's got a big resin printer where, yeah, your peel forces will be so strong that most magnets aren't going to be able to overcome that problem. So he's got to be a little bit careful. Baggy and then the freezer. That's where it belongs. Next up, a fail from one of our Patreon members, Mr. 5 HFR. This was posted in one of his local groups where a Benchy has decided to get a little shifty. And what's happening here is likely something that the Voron community loves and I absolutely see no value in a speedboat race. Don't get me wrong, I love watching actual boats on water go as functionally fast as possible, but they take the same risks that you do when you try to print a Benchy fast. Something is going to break and it could be very expensive. And when you're looking at a Voron, which I believe this is a switch wire, I could be wrong, I'm not a Voron guy. Voron guys, please don't hate me. Maybe one day I'll build a Voron, but that day is not today. When you start moving so fast, you run into issues of your steppers, quite frankly, not being able to keep up. But we might also have an issue with one of our belts, right? This Y-axis belt here might not be secure. And if that belt is not secure for whatever reason, and that could be maybe it's not tight enough and it's slipping on the drive gear, or, and uh, I have some friends that like to make fun of me for this, if the grub screws aren't tight, you can also have this problem where it will start skipping on the printer stepper motor itself. So how do you fix this, right? I would immediately look at how fast am I printing and is the printer able to do that? If the printer is not able to do it, slow it down. If for some reason it is able to print at those speeds and you're only seeing this on certain prints and certain orientations, I would look at that Y-axis as being your culprit. It could be things like you're overdriving your stepper motor and the driver is cutting out, causing the motor to basically lose position a little bit. It could be your belt is loose or it could be that the grub screw is loose on your motor shaft. So couple of things to look at. Hopefully it gets solved. Z-axis won't go down all the way. Help. I had this issue where the slider won't go all the way down and get stuck. I was watching a setup video for my new Ender 3 V2 and everything was going fine until it got stuck. He said to make the wheels loose, which I did, and that didn't help. I've watched several videos and can't figure it out. I have completely disassembled and reassembled this printer. And I even took off the Z-axis motor module to mess around with that and nothing works. If anyone knows how to fix this, please help me. I agree here that if they loosen the motor to see if it goes down, it is absolutely binding, right? The, the system is binding itself. Now, normally I would say if you're trying to send it down to home and it's not going down, that is likely due to your limit switch being messed up. But in this particular case, yeah, it's binding. And if you loosen your motor a little bit and let it find its home, you should be okay. So let the printer come all the way down, then you can tighten it up and life should be good to go. Now, I don't know what that's going to create in terms of other issues, and it might behoove you to pull off your actual uh, lead screw and roll it across a table and see if it's wobbly at all. If your lead screw itself is a little bit bent or wobbly, it could cause this problem and there's no way to fix it other than to straighten your lead screw or get a new one or a new printer, I guess is also an option. But this is kind of why I'm not a huge fan of enders, especially for newbies. Now I'm gonna make a gross assumption and say that this person is probably a newbie and that's okay, right? I love new people in this industry and I believe 
we should accept and assist them. That's why we do these videos. That's why we ask you guys send in your fails with the particular note that episode 52 will be our next meme episode. So if you want to get one in a meme episode, make sure you tag us on the social medias. And so I don't look down upon people to do this, but I believe that the lack of documentation on an Ender 3v2 and how many videos are out there building one, even we have one, and the different experiences that everybody goes through building one means that it's not the same experience for one person that looks at one video. And I don't have a solution to this. I guess that is part and parcel of having something that is popular in this industry where you're gonna have a lot of videos on it, but it bums me out because clearly this person has been trying and trying and trying. And I, I just wish it's like, hey, go talk to Grant, go call his shop phone. I have a public phone number on our website. Call the damn shop phone. I'll answer the phone most of the time, unless I'm busy. And then I'll call you back or email us YouTube at 3 musketeerscom I don't want people to suffer. I want you guys, if you need the help to just reach out and anyone that has reached out knows I respond to the emails. I want to help you guys because if you have crappy experiences, you tell other people you have crappy experiences and then everybody has a crappy experience because no one gets 3D printers. And I want more people with 3D printers, damn it. It's fun. Another submission from Aaron on the Prusa i3 MK3 user group. Any idea why I'm getting these weird horizontal lines on each item? Esun PLA Plus is the second batch with identical lines. First batch was made with brand new filament. Temps were 215 and 60. This one I'm on the fence about. So if you told me it was the first time, I would say it's probably crash detection kicking in. But the fact that it's the second time tells me you might have a file error that the printer is attempting to get around and it's not able to. We're using the enhance feature, of course, and I'm seeing some issues. We've got these lines and it goes across all the prints, which leads me to believe that we have a file problem, not a printer problem. But if we do have a printer problem where maybe it is running into a crash or there's a harmonic that makes it think it has a crash, you can try to just turn off crash detection and see what happens. This is a Prusa, so of course it does have crash detection. And I'll tell you from my experience, we have to have crash detection off on every one of our farm printers because they will start to resonate the shelf in a way that makes all the others think that they're going into a crash environment. And unfortunately, the whole rehoming process and then back to printing, while it is nice, is not always perfect. And we've had, I, I've struggled to figure out what the problem was until I saw it occur with my own eyes, where the printer was not failing for any reason, but it detected a crash. I just turn off crash detection, everything works great. Except now when I do have crashes, the parts fail, but it is what it is. Those are the risks that you take, add more Z hop and life is good. So if this is a crash detection issue and you have other printers on a shelf, turn off crash detection. I would immediately try that first. We got a fail from the maker deck discord, Mr. Rancoon9128, where they turned up the speed a little bit too high here. And of course, if they turn up the speed too high, the answer is turn the speed back down, but they're trying to print threads. And what we're looking at here are the threads themselves not working. Now, they said they turned up the speed too high. But I don't know if that's the case. The rest of the part actually looks okay. And that leads me to believe that potentially it's not a speed thing. And instead, it's an overhang thing. This is common sometimes with threads. If your threads don't have the appropriate slopes on them, when you try to print, your printer's effectively trying to bridge all of that and will end up instead not being able to bridge very well and just make lines across. And that's this line here is what leads me to believe that's what's occurring. It could be because the cooling isn't amazing. They do have a custom cooler, but I'm not 100% sure here. I would look at adding support to this first and then reprinting it and seeing. I know that could be a pain in the ass to remove support from threads. But ultimately, if it means your part is not going to succeed, then wouldn't you rather remove support from threads than deal with failed prints over and over? If you do believe that it is a speed thing, which based on the rest of your print, the rest of the print looks fine, it leads me to believe it's not a speed thing and instead a bridging support and lack of support problem. So hope that helps. Next up, this is a fail from my buddy, Danny's Discord. Danny is the 3D printing DM and he runs the channel 3D printing tabletop. And this one came in from the user Vivid is me. Now Vivid recently had a bit of a meltdown 
with their Prusa. Take a look at that. I have only ever seen this once before, and that was with Pooch from Repcord. He had a block on his Prusa actually melt on him, similar to this, where it looked like solder, or maybe there was too much tin in the aluminum or aluminum for all of you across the pond. And uh, yeah, when you heat it up to a certain temperature, it just melts. Now, what causes this? I don't know. I'm assuming it's a bad batch of the actual blocks themselves. And Prusa, of course, jumped in and took care of them. But when they did the reassembly, right, they were given a whole new uh, block, brake, nozzle, and uh, heater, and thermistor. So it was just a, a basically a drop-in replacement. I don't think they hot tightened it. And as far as I can tell, that was the case. So we have a blob right there. That was the first issue that we saw with Vivid. Hey, we've got a blob. I said, okay, check your nozzle for me. And you can see that we've got a little bit of oozing around the nozzles. I said, okay, grab a brass brush. Be careful because you don't want to use a brush that is harder than brass. They're using a brass nozzle, I believe, although they said it's a hardened steel. I've never seen hardened steels look that particular color. Normally hardened steel nozzles will look like black, right? They'll look black. And the issue that we have here is, I can actually show this, is that I believe when they put everything back together, it wasn't hot tightened. And when things aren't hot tightened, they're all just kind of loose, right? When it's all nice and tight, it's very difficult to back parts off. And when you assemble a hot end, especially an E3D V6, you're supposed to run the nozzle all the way in and then turn it back out about two turns. Then you install your heat brake, then you install your heat sink, you put in your thermistor, and then you put in your heater, then you reassemble the printer. Once you've done that, you must then hot tighten everything. And if you don't hot tighten it, the plastic will find its way up through the threads, right? Because as metals get hot, they expand. And if you don't deal with that expansion, you're going to have a bad time. This is what Vivid is dealing with. So we can see that there is some more leaking up here. And again, that completely leads me to believe that the nozzle is not tight on the heat break. It's very simple. Heat the printer up to 280 C. Make sure that you hold onto the actual block itself with a pair of pliers, but don't short the wires and then go ahead and hot tighten it. When you do retighten everything, E3D recommends that you use three Newton meters worth of torque. Now, most torque wrenches aren't going to go that low, so I just kind of guess, but don't over tighten it because of course you will damage it. Now, one thing I do want to point out here, because I think we have another problem. This heat block appears to be too low. That's a problem. I believe that when Vivid went to reinstall everything, the hot end might not be installed correctly because normally your part cooling fan, which is this, would be quite a bit lower and much closer to the nozzle than the block itself. But looking here, that is about right. So maybe it is just the angle. I don't know. But yeah, that's a crazy failure. And I don't know what causes this. I mean, obviously it's a chemistry thing, whether it's chemistry of the aluminum or whatever it might be, it's a chemistry problem. And I know that E3D as well as Prusa Research absolutely take care of those that have had it. But this is the second time that I've seen it. I'm actually in contact with Vivid because I would like to have this. One, because I think that E3D might want it back so that they can take a look at it and run tests on it. But two, that's a really cool failure to just like have. And I know that's kind of dumb. A lot of you might think that that's dumb, but these are really unique failures. And I think that is important for us to remember them and understand how they occur. Because if we don't understand how they occur, then we don't know what to do when they occur. Something to know, but yeah. That's all I got for you guys today. It's a bit of a shorter episode, but I hope you enjoy it. Let me know down in those comments what you thought of the fails, what you think of this crazy E3D V6 problem. And it is isolated, of course, but stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. Don't short out your hot ends. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one.
Hey, thanks so much for watching this video and a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Remember, if you want to join this elite group of Musketeers, you can click those links in that description down below and pledge for as little as $1 a month. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series where you can learn about fails and how to fix them. And right next to that will be our video on the Minchin Beagle camera, which does make time lapses easy when it works. Go take a look at those. I'll see you all down in the comments and in the next one. Take care.